Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you how to add and assign a DJ to an event. Um, so it's uh, really quite simple, actually. What we're going to do is we're going to create a contact and we're going to set the contact type to DJ. And that's basically all we need to do. Now, there is one extra little thing you need to keep in mind is that we also need to have our service region set up. So if you're new to Event Master Pro, you're also going to have to go through um, after you've set up your, you know, your states and your cities. You're going to have to create a service region, um, and I'll show you how to do that in this video also. So first of all, we're going to go and look at an event in the city of Melbourne. So we have an event here, and it's over here on the right that you will select the DJ. So I've got a list of all my DJs that are in Melbourne. So when I need to find a DJ, I can just Choose a DJ from the list. You can actually even see, you know, the DJ's phone number there and their star rating. Um, so you can give DJs a star rating as well. So if I was to select a DJ um, and I want to sign the DJ to the job, all I need to do is once this loads up is I'm going to click the DJ locked checkbox. And then it's going to ask me, do you want to send a confirmation email to the DJ? I would say yes. And then that's gonna send an email to the DJ and say, hey, you've just been assigned to a job. Um, please log in and check the event details if you can't work on this date. Also, you know, please get back in touch with us and let us know. Um, so that's what happens. I'm gonna say no here because this is just an inquiry and I don't want to send this DJ an email at the moment. But uh, assigning a DJ to a job is that simple. And you can actually assign the DJ without sending that email. So right now the DJ is assigned to the event, but I'm going to uncheck that. So each time I assign a DJ or you know unassign the DJ, it's gonna leave a note down here in the follow-up notes section. So it sort of keeps a bit of a history of things that are going on um, throughout the website, but also, um, another thing I want to show you quickly is once you've got your DJ set here in the system, I can click this email button and it's going to open my email program. So I can quickly send the DJ an email if I need to send a message to the DJ. So that's very handy there. Um, you've also got this button up here, which will give you a uh, Google Maps direct uh, sort of directions from the suburb or the town of the DJ to the suburb or town of the event. So if I click this button, it's gonna first give me the option. It's gonna say, do you wanna go from Melbourne, which is the main city, or do you wanna go from Baronia, which is where the DJ lives? So if I click Baronia, up in a new tab, it's gonna open up Google Maps, and it shows me how far away the DJ lives. So I know it's about 65 Ks, it's an hour drive. And then I can decide if maybe I wanna choose a DJ who lives closer or, you know, if I put this DJ on the job, am I gonna give him a travel fee? And it makes it quick and easy to work that out. But let's get back to how we're gonna add the DJ into the system. So first of all, over to the left sidebar, we're gonna click contacts and we're going to create a new contact here. So you'll add all the information about the DJ. Um, I'm gonna say, uh, you know, James Brown. And when I select the member type as DJ, you will see this extra information show up on the bottom right here. Now, most of the time, depending on the structure of your DJ business, you're probably gonna choose them to be a contractor. And that will mean that for a standard birthday party or you know the standard four or five hour gig, you're gonna have a certain rate that you negotiate that you pay the DJ. You can put that amount in here. So let's say it's $400 for five hours. And we're gonna put the DJ's email in here. So I'm gonna say James Brown at, uh, I want, well, just gonna put a dummy email. We will put the DJ's suburb in there as well. So that way, later on when you want to use this button, um, it's gonna help you 
work out how far away the DJ is from the party. So put the DJ suburb or town, whatever you want to call it, depending where you are. Put that in there. Select the city. So I'm going to say this DJ is in Melbourne. And I'm going to put the DJ's phone number in there as well, just to make it nice and easy for me to get in touch with them when I'm going through this list of DJs here. So when I click save, now it's going to send the DJ an email with the login details. Now in the email templates, you can update all of these emails so you can tweak it a little bit and customize it. But by default, it's just a very simple email. It says you, your login details have been created and uh, you know, uh, you know, here's the login details anytime you need to um, go log in. So once you assign a DJ to a job, um, actually before I show you that, here's the five star rating. So, you know, if a DJ starts off on a clean slate, you could give them a five star rating. If they do something bad or, you know, they, they show up late or something, you can, you know, decrease their rating. And that's going to affect their position on the list. So the five star DJs, they go at the top and the one star DJs and the zero stars go down the bottom. So, now, for that new DJ that I've just created to show up in the list, I need to actually refresh the screen here. So once I refresh the screen, then we will see our new DJ, James Brown, showing up in the list. So, that's how simple it is to add a DJ, but there was that other thing I was telling you about before about service regions. So we're gonna skip over here. We're gonna go straight down to regions, region settings. Now, by now, you should have already um, added your city or you know activated your country and your states. Um, but then service regions is something a little bit different. Service regions are like uh, a group of cities. So let's say, um, you know, in Australia, we have Melbourne and then we have Geelong, which is like a two hour drive away. Now the DJs who live in Melbourne, they can travel to Geelong, um, even though they don't live there. Um, so we create a service region which groups them cities. And so the DJs that show up in the drop down are actually showing up by service region, not by city. So if this event is in Melbourne, it's gonna actually show my Melbourne and Geelong DJs because a DJ in Geelong could travel to Melbourne and vice versa. So if you don't have the service region set up, the DJs won't show up in the list. So if you're new to Event Master Pro, once you set up your um, you know, country, city, states, you're gonna click add new and you're gonna add a new service region. So I'll quickly show you how to do that now. So let's say we say, oh, you know, we've got um, the Geelong region. This is the position on the list. So I'm just gonna say, you know, position 20 on the list. And then you'll add the city. So you can put as many cities as you want. I mean, if your DJs can fly around the whole country, you could just create a region called Australia and or, or america and just put all the cities um it depends on you know how your business is organized but generally this is for you know some two cities that are within a driving distance so you know i would put you know geelong and melbourne together i would call it the geelong region or the melbourne region and then we're going to submit that and uh and that will create that service region so you need to have this done in order for the djs to show up in the drop down so I hope that's uh, uh, all been pretty clear on how you add a DJ, how you assign a DJ, and, and also make sure that you've got the service region set up. So thanks for your time, and I will see you in the next training video.